Number 40. Dichloroethane, a compound that is often used for dry cleaning, contains carbon, hydrogen, and chlorine. It has a molar mass of 99 grams per mole. Analysis of a sample shows that it contains 24.3% carbon and 4.1% hydrogen. What is its molecular formula? Okie dokie. All right. So basically, we just have to find out what the molecular formula is of this compound called dichloroethane. They gave us a little bit of a hint here, right? They gave us the percent compositions. They told us that, you know, dichloroethane is 24.3% carbon and 4.1% hydrogen. So from a percent composition, we can always find the empirical formula. And then from there, we can find the molecular formula. Now we've done tons of problems already, but if you guys need a refresher, remember there's a four step process to find a empirical formula and then just a quick one stepper to get to the molecular formula. And that is this whole process right here. So maybe let's just make this a little bit smaller because we got a lot to, to do in this one. So maybe I'll just put it up, up here. Uh, that looks beautiful. Okay. So from a percent composition, we could always find the empirical formula by just running through these four individual steps. And then there's a one more additional step to go from an empirical formula to a molecular formula. Now, remember an empirical formula is the most simplified formula. And then the molecular formula, we're just building up from the empirical formula. Let's get that empirical formula first. The first thing we're going to write down is we're going to start from the left, right? We need to write down all of our percents. So they told us that we had 24.3% carbon. And they told us that we had 4.1% hydrogen. But whoa, 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 right? If I add this up, this doesn't equal 100%, right? A percent has to always have a 100% total. But they told us that this compound contained actually three elements. It contained carbon, hydrogen, and chlorine. They only gave us two percentages. So how are we going to find the percent of chlorine, which is CL? Ah, yeah, we got to add up these and then subtract from 100, right? The percent chlorine is the difference uh, from 100 of 24.3 and 4.1. So let's just say if I have 100 total percent and I minus 24.3 and then I minus the 4.1, I have a remainder of 71.6% chlorine. And now I have a total of 100%. So I have now all of the percents I need. So now I'm ready to go. I'm just going to make these maybe a little bit more spaced out because there's going to be a lot of writing. Don't get scared though. We got this. Okay. So now how do I turn a percent into the grams? Well, if we're assuming, we're not really assuming, but if we know that this is out of a 100%, we can assume that the gram values would be out of 100 grams. It just makes it easier. So if the total is out of 100% and the total is out of 100 grams, the percent values actually equals the grams. So that's the little trick there. So I'm just going to say now that instead of 24.3%, I'm going to be working with 24.3 grams of carbon. And instead of working with uh, 4.1%, I'm going to be working with 4.1 grams of hydrogen and then not 71.6% chlorine. It's 71. And let me just actually 71.6 grams of chlorine. Okay. So the first part is done. Now we have to go from the gram value to the moles. How do we do that? Well, grams to moles is just a conversion. Okay, so we're going to be conversion. We're going to be conversion. We're going to be conversion. We're going to be converting here, right? We want to take our gram values of each one of them and convert it into moles. Well, how do we do that? Whenever we convert, we always multiply by a ratio, right? There's going to be some number on the top and some number on the bottom of my ratio, the division sign. So for each one of these, I'm just going to make a little ratio line, right? 
And remember, when we're converting, the unit that you don't want always goes on the opposite side. So in this case, grams of carbon is going to get thrown down at the bottom of the first conversion. Grams of hydrogen gets thrown on the bottom because we don't want that. And then grams of chlorine gets thrown on the bottom as well. The unit that we want is the one that's now going to be replaced. It's going to be on the top. So I don't want grams of carbon. I want moles of carbon, not grams of hydrogen. I want mole of hydrogen and not grams of chlorine. I want mole of uh, chlorine. But now the question is, what are the actual numbers that goes here? We have the units, but now we just got to find out the numbers. The gram to mole conversion guys is on the periodic table. So that's why I put out my periodic table here. Okay. These are the numbers that I see. These mass numbers might be a little bit different for you, uh, but uh, they should be relatively the same, different periodic tables around the masses. Now just know that the mass values, which are the decimal values, it is not the whole numbers at the bottom. Remember the whole numbers are the atomic number, the number of protons. The mass number is in the unit grams. And this represents one mole of the element. So key in on one mole, one mole, one mole. If we're using the periodic table, it's always one mole. So I can say that one mole of hydrogen equals 1.008 grams of hydrogen. One mole of carbon equals 12.01 grams of carbon. So we're going to be using that information to plug in the numbers here. So for example, for the carbon one, one mole of carbon equals the mass that's on the periodic table, 12.01. Maybe let me just make that a little bit nicer. Okay. Hydrogen, one mole of hydrogen equals this in grams. So one mole of hydrogen equals 1.008 grams of hydrogen. And then one mole of chlorine equals the 35.45 grams of chlorine. And Grams of carbon cancels out with grams of carbon, right? Grams of hydrogen cancels out with the grams of hydrogen. Grams of chlorine cancels out with the grams of chlorine. And the unit that we have left is just moles. Now we just have to actually do the math. Any number in the denominator of something is always divided by. So DD, denominator divide. So we're just going to run through these 24.3 divided by 12.01. I'm going to cut it off after a couple of uh, decimals. I'll do a few of them. 2.023 moles of C. And then 4.1 divided by 1.008. I get 4.067 moles of H. And then 71.6 divided by 35.45 is 2.020. If we're going to round a little bit, 2.020 moles of CL. Okay. So the next part is done. Almost there, guys. Now we have to convert our moles into some type of mole ratio. Well, the ratio kind of goes with the conversion. This was a ratio, something over something else. So basically a ratio is just dividing. So the number that we got, right, the 2.03, the 4.067, the 2.020, we're going to be dividing this number by something in order to make the ratio, right? A number divided by something else is basically a ratio. But now what are we going to be dividing by? Well, look ahead. We want to make the empirical formula first. And the empirical formula is always the most simplified formula. It's the one with the smallest subscripts. So simplified, smallest, you're going to divide your numbers by the smallest number of moles that you have. So I have to look at these three numbers and decide which one is the lowest one or the smallest. That's how you go from a mole to a mole ratio. All you got to do is just divide by the smallest. So I'll just put divide by the smallest number. So I look through here, the carbon moles and the chlorine moles are very, very, very similar, but I'm just going to use the 2.020. So I'm going to divide each number by that. Okay. 
Now, at this stage of the game, we should get very, 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 very close to whole number values. Now we're going to be simple. Uh, we're going to be saying uh, not simplifying, but we're going to try to get a whole number here. So, for example, for the moles of carbon, if I do 2.023 divided by 2.02, I get a number that's like 1.00148, and then blah 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 blah. This number is very, 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 very close to just one. So I'm going to just say the whole number here. I have one mole of carbon. Now we go to the next one, 4.067 divided by 2.020. I get a number of 2.01, but it's very, very close to two moles of hydrogen. And then this was the smallest number, so this is going to go back to one mole of Cl. And now my mole ratio is done. The empirical formula now, going from your ratio to your empirical formula, all you have to do is just make the compound. Usually I'll just start from the top and work my way down. It doesn't really matter which order you put it in. So I'll say that I have a empirical formula of C, and I only have one of them, right? So I don't have to put a one here. You can, but we don't really do that. And then the next element I have is a hydrogen, and they're telling me that we have two of them, so I have two, right? And then I go back to chlorine, and chlorine, they're only telling me that I have one of them, so Cl. Okay. This is your empirical formula. So we're finally at this level. Now, all we have to do is take our empirical formula and convert it into our molecular formula. How do we do that? Well, here is the little thing that we just need to know. We need to take our molecular mass of the actual compound and divide it by our empirical mass of the compound that we just found. Now, just know that a molecular mass, this is coming from the molecular formula, can also be called the molar mass. So you might see molecular mass, you might see molar mass. They both mean the same thing. The empirical mass comes from the empirical formula that you just found out. Now, they gave us some piece of information. It said that this compound, dichloroethane, had a molar mass of 99 grams per mole. So we know what the top number is, right? The, the molar mass is the same thing as a molecular mass. They told us that our molar mass was 99 grams per mole. If you want to put the units here, be my guest. I'm just going to use the numbers because I know that we're using the correct uh, units. Now, all we have to do is divide by the empirical mass. But they didn't give it to us in the question, but th now we found out what our empirical formula was. So I can find out what this mass is by the numbers on the periodic table, given that I have one, chlorine, uh, one carbon, two hydrogens, and one chlorine. So let's try practice of learning how to find a mass, right? We've done tons of problems like this, so if you want a refresher, you can go back in the playlist to find those questions. We've done tons of them, all right? But I have one carbon, so that's 12.01. And then I have two hydrogens, so I have to take that and times it by two, right? Two times 1.008 in, in my case. And then I just add one chlorine, so 35.45. So my empirical mass, and I'm just going to put it down here, is 49.476 grams per mole. So try that out, guys, okay? And this is going to be the number that goes on the bottom. So I'm going to put 49.476. And I'm going to get a number. So let's see, 99, the molar mass, divided by the empirical mass, 49.476. I get 2.0097, but it's very, very close to 2. You're looking for basically a whole number here. This number is going to tell you how much larger the molar or the, the molecular formula is to the empirical formula. So if my empirical formula is CH2Cl, 
All you're going to do is take the number that you just found and times it by the subscripts. You're basically doubling your subscripts. And that is what is going to be your molecular formula. So I'll put it up here because I know the subscribe button's down here. So if you want to click that, thank you. But if not, that's okay. I'm going to put the molecular formula up here. So I'm just going to say C1H2, C1H2Cl1, right? But we're multiplying by 2. So 1 times 2 is A2, right? 2 times 2 is A4. So this becomes a 4. And then 1 times 2 is A2. And that is your final answer. This is the molecular formula of dichloroethane, C2H4Cl2. And remember, guys, di means two, right? We learned that when we did naming. So dichloro, I should have two chlorines. So yeah, it checks out. So that's it, guys. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to. Uh, that would help us out, and it gets the word out there that this service is Zix. And, you know, thank you so much for that. Let's keep studying hard. Let's keep learning our empirical formulas, molecular formulas. I believe in you guys. And I'll see you in the next lesson. All right. See you then. Bye.